Hello, thanks for clicking on this Miss Babs video about how to add and use a lifeline in your knitting. If this is a technique that you haven't used before, um, a lifeline is a piece of yarn or a smaller circular needle that you insert into the stitches on a row and what this does is if you happen to make a mistake um, or you lose your place and you need to rip back to a place to either know exactly where you are or fix a mistake, this lifeline will allow you to do that and not have to rip out the whole thing. So you can see it here in the knitting. This is just a little bit of knitting that I cast on. It is one repeat of feather and fan. Um, uh, did a little bit of knitting and put in three lifelines. You can see them here with the yellow yarn. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to use both yarn and a circular needle to put in a lifeline. Um, today we're using Yummy 2-ply and our lifeline is actually going to be the same yarn. Uh, you can use a yarn that's thinner, uh, preferably smooth, because this is it's not going to stay in your knitting permanently. It is going to come out and you want to be able to remove it easily without distorting your stitches. So um, it can help you be a more confident knitter. If you're working on a new project uh, with stitches that you've never done before, putting in a lifeline um, at the beginning can uh, just give you some peace of mind that if you do make a mistake because the stitches are new to you or the count seems odd or you know, something's going on that you can always get back to a certain point. Um, usually you put a lifeline in at the end of a repeat. This is a four row repeat and I've just completed row three. So I'm going to knit the fourth row and put in a lifeline. Um, and I'm going to share that with you. So you'll need some smooth yarn, uh, your knitting yarn, and I'm also going to show you how to put a lifeline in with a circular needle. So you'll need a smaller circular needle that I'm knitting on a size four and I'm gonna be using a size one. You'll also need a tapestry needle. And for safety's sake, you'll need some stoppers for the end of your needle so it doesn't slide out of your work. Okay, so let's get started. And I'm going to knit the last row of this repeat and then I'll join you back here. Okay. I have completed the repeat. Um, Feather and Fan is a four row repeat and I've just completed row four. So I'm gonna insert a lifeline because I am gonna make notes or I'm, I'm gonna remember that my lifeline is on row four and when I, if I have to use it, then my next row will be the first row of the repeat. And you can see I've put in a couple of lifelines here um, in order to use yarn as your lifeline, you're going to want to cut a piece of yarn that is longer than your rows. This is only one repeat, so I've got 20 stitches, so I didn't need a big piece of yarn. You want to use yarn that's very visible and that's smooth and um, preferably the same size or, or smaller than the yarn that you're using because you want it to sit in those stitches and not be in the way. Um, you can even use embroidery floss, or I've heard people use dental floss, but um, today we're going to use the same yarn. So this is a bright color, so that was what I used. I'm actually going to take out one of these lifelines that I used previously, um, and I'm going to use this yarn. So you're going to have a piece of yarn that is wide enough to hold your knitting. You're going to thread a tapestry needle with that yarn. and you're gonna come in from the end that you would normally be knitting. See, so here's your tail. And you can come back here to the cord because it'll give you a little bit more room or you can um, work when they're up here on the needle. I, I tend to come back here to the cord. So you just have a little bit more room on your stitches. And you're just going to run your tapestry needle through these stitches. Uh, if you are using stitch markers, you're not going to want to catch your stitch markers with the um, waste yarn. 
because um, then they aren't going to move. Um, so you want to leave, go around them um, with the needle. So you're just going to come in here and grab all of these stitches and pull the yarn through and then just let it dangle on either side. So you've put in your lifeline. It's just going to sit there with your knitting and you're going to ignore it. Um, you don't want to catch your lifeline in with your stitches when you do your next row. So I know my next row is a knit row. So I'm just going to ignore that it's there and pick up my working yarn and knit the next row and let that yarn just sit there down at the bottom of those stitches. That one kind of got wrapped around, that's okay. Just knit normally and don't catch that yarn up in the stitch. And you can see that it's just sitting down there at the bottom of the stitches. So I'm going to continue across this row, just being careful not to catch the lifeline in my stitches. And I'm going to complete this repeat and then I'm going to show you how to put in a circular needle as a lifeline. So join me back here in a second and I will show you how to use a smaller circular needle as a lifeline. Okay, so I finished that repeat and there's our lifeline sitting just at the bottom of those stitches. You can see it, uh, if I stretch it, you can see it really good. So I wanna put in a lifeline with a circular needle as well. Uh, it's a good way to um, catch your stitches. Uh, some people keep a size one needle uh, just for this. And you know, it can be one that maybe has a kink in the cord or uh, if you don't use size ones very often, it might be nice to just have a very small size just for this purpose. But um, you can see that the lifeline that I put in with the yarn, it doesn't move. It's just gonna ride along with your knitting and, and be there for you to use if you make a mistake or lose your place. So with this method, you'll need a circular needle that is smaller with a pretty long cord um, just so it can dangle and not be in your way. Um, this particular piece is just 20 stitches so I'm not using a, a real long needle um, and you'll need some stoppers. You can also use a rubber band or um, but the needle is so small and the cords are slippery so this method has a tendency to fall out if you don't Put stoppers on the end so we're gonna put stoppers on so it's basically the same thing you're going to move your knitting back to the cord because you'll have more room and you're going to use your smaller needle to thread through the stitches that are on the last row of your repeat and you just want to go carefully and not split stitches Again, you're going to want to go around any stitch markers so that um, they can be slipped um, when they're supposed to be according to your pattern. And you're just going to catch all of these stitches on this smaller needle. In this case, it's a size one. That seems to be a good size. Just come on here and grab all of these. and push it through. And then that's just gonna stay 
right there while you knit this first row. So I'm going to put stoppers on the end so that it doesn't slide out by accident. It would be terrible to lose your lifeline if you're really relying on it. And then I'm just going to continue on with the first row of my next repeat. And I'm going to just ignore that lifeline, just going to slide it down to the bottom and knit my next row, which is a knit row. It's not cooperating back here. <laughs> Got a little tight on that row so there it is sitting at the bottom of my stitches and i'm just going to knit the next row which i know is a knit row and then i'm going to knit the rest of this repeat and then i'm going to show you how to use your lifelines so this we'll, we'll be doing this twice because i'm going to have to use the needles and the yarn. So that's just another way to do it. You just ignore it and knit your rows and hopefully you won't need it but um, it's there. It's going to be there in case you make a mistake or maybe your stitch count gets off and you know in frustration oftentimes if you don't use a lifeline you'll just rip it right back to the beginning and you have to start all over again but this way uh, you can be a little bit more confident and just have this lifeline waiting for you in case you need it. If not, you just ignore it. So join me back here in just a second and I will show you how to use your lifelines. Okay, I have tried to continue knitting <laughs> and I've made a mistake on purpose. Here is the knitting needle that we put in as a lifeline. There's our stopper so that it can't get away. Um, and I am I look down and I realize that I have forgotten something. It's just not right. I don't have the right number of stitches. I don't have yarn overs where I should have yarn overs. Something has gone horribly wrong and um, I can't fix it. I don't want to go backwards and I don't um, I don't want to drop down and fix it, and I'm going to show you how to use this lifeline in order to get back to uh, where I know I'm supposed to be. So um, the first thing you do is you take your needle out of your knitting, and I know that could freak you out a little bit, but uh, it's really the only way. And so you unravel your knitting, <laughs> and this could be kind of scary for some people, I guess. Um, you can fix it one stitch at a time if you like, um, but this lifeline will allow you just to unravel and get back to a row that you have determined is you know where you're at. Like I said, it's usually at the beginning of a repeat, um, and it won't let you go any further. That's the cool thing, is once you're there, you're there. You don't have to worry about that last stitch. You don't have to worry about it coming off. Um, it will not let you, because you've gone into the stitches, it will not let you go any further. And so you are back to the beginning of the repeat. Uh, in this case, it is a knit row. And I'm gonna take the stopper off of this end. And because it's a knitting needle, I'm just going to continue knitting off this row because I know what row I'm on. I'm on a knit row and I can just slide the work up onto my little needles here and I can continue working. Um, don't worry about the gauge because the gauge that you're knitting at is determined by the knitting, the needle that you're knitting onto, not the needle that you're knitting off of. So this is a knit row. It's the first row in this pattern or in this repeat. Um, and so I can just knit straight off this needle and get going again. And my mistake is gone and I'm back on track. 
Next, I'm gonna show you how to use the yarn lifeline. So I'm gonna finish this row and be right back with that. Okay, I have discovered yet another mistake in my knitting and I need to use my yarn lifeline. Uh, we're gonna go about this much the same way as the knitting needle um, lifeline. You have to remove the work from your working needle and you have to unravel your knitting until you get back to your yarn lifeline. And the same way that the knitting needle kept the stitches from going any further than that row that you know you're safe on, it will do the same thing with the yarn. We got one more. And it won't go any further. It just tightens up on that string. So here is our safe row. And you're going to pick your working needle back up again. And you're going to follow the lifeline with your needle and pick up these stitches. Now you can see why you would want a smooth yarn with good contrast, because you need to see where you're going and what you're picking up. You're just gonna pick them all back up on your needle, even if they look funny. See, that one looks a little funny, but it's a stitch. So we know we put this in on row four. So when I get done picking these stitches up, I'm going to be ready to do row one, which is a knit row. So I'm going to pick all these up, put them on my needle. And because you put the lifeline in as the stitches were oriented on your needle, you're not going to have to worry about the orientation of your stitches. They are going to be sitting just right for you to continue knitting safely on. So we're going to squish those on to my needle. And here's my working yarn, so I'm going to have to go all the way to the other end. And I'm going to take my lifeline out. Or, really, you could just leave it in, um, in case you mess up again. Uh, but it's made to be removed. Like that. And then you're ready to go. Ready to continue knitting. So that is kind of a nice, uh, reassuring tool to use if you're a new knitter or if you are a knitter who is unsure of the stitch count or the stitches that you're using. If you're working on a huge project and you just aren't very confident about fixing your mistakes or um, you know, for any reason, uh, using a lifeline is a great idea and it's easy. And thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy your knitting, happy knitting, and thanks for joining us here. Bye-bye.